Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard, author of Visualizing Happiness in Every Area of Your Life and host of this podcast, Incredible Life Creator. And today I have with me, Mark Lori. Hey, Mark. Hello, how are you? I am good. I am so excited to get into our conversation today because I have seen some of your work and I'm excited to show it to other people. Oh, thank you. I'm looking forward to this too. It's it's, it's fun. I'm looking forward. I get excited usually. So just so people know you, I'm going to go ahead and read your bio. Okay. So Mark Laurie has been doing boudoir nudes for 45 years. 5,200 women donated $514,000 to charity or inner spirit has, as part of her mandate, lots of awards. Canadian photographer of the year, four international photography of the year awards. Most awarded photographer in North America. He holds two degrees, Master of Photography and photo Photographic Craftsman, 45 accreditations, photography reality show winner, followed by two seasons. Judge had his own TV series, has images on the Voyager 3 space mission. Only photographer to have a fellowship on both sides of the Atlantic. He had the General Hospital Psychiatrist Department do a medical white paper on his photography approach because it changed women's lives. Mark has five books out, two of which are in the Canadian National Archives. He has spoken on several main stages, mentored and taught. Mark has also published and edited his own photography magazine in a series of loan collection photography books. Watching the change in women from his photo sessions has driven him in the boudoir art field Mark also loves creating art with a full line of wall decor images. He loves travel and is pho photographed and taught in 16 countries. Mark's wife, Jan, is also his business partner. He enjoys pets, having had five Irish setters, a bunny, and our second cat. Enjoy, he enjoys creating art on the computer. Well, that is... Like is a huge resume, a huge. That's my resume. shortened. It's my shortened version of the resume. Actually, it goes. We actually have a Wikipedia page. Oh my goodness, that that is amazing! And I was stumbling in all the photography <laughs> words in there. It's <laughs> a big words. It's yeah, it's unfair. So yeah, there's not so, a natural flow to it. Yeah, that. So that is your short version of your bio. Yeah. But just in your own words, tell us your story. Sure. It's, I guess it goes back. We'll go back to the beginning. As I mentioned offline there, everything in my life these days is decades ago. So I've been doing this for 45 years, but I, I was never trained to be a photographer. I started off as a recreation director. So back in the mid seventies, the world was a different place. Back then the, the computers hadn't arrived. They're just starting to come in. Leisure money was everywhere up in Canada anyway. And the future was going to be leisure education because people have so much money and so much time. So we went into leisure education. And I was trained to be a, a facility director. So I'd, I'd run a city's town as I was trained to do. And I did. I, I actually ran small community towns and all their whole recreation facility stuff. But when I was there, I would ask women, what would you like your, your kids to do? And they'd say, oh, I'd say, we'd love basketball. They make up a basketball court and they go, oh, how did you know? Our kids love that because I said so I listened. And then we came to Calgary and there's all the leisure jobs are gone. So my sister-in-law says, you should, you want to buy a house, you should maybe get a real estate license. So I did. And it was the same thing. I, the guys really didn't care where they lived. As long as you had the address they needed, like they want to be in Bonavista or some, you know, I am. Everybody. So, and he could afford it. That was his own, the guy's only true criteria back then. But the woman, she ran the house. So, it has, so I figure out what he can afford. I'd say, well, what do you want? Where do you want a mudroom? How many bedrooms? That kind of stuff. So once again, I'm asking the woman, what do you want? And that's been the rhythm of my life. And so but real estate's a 24-7 job. So I was trying to find something that would kind of break it up a little bit. So I borrowed my wife's camera and I, I got a couple of people to photograph. And I was like, so cool. because I, And when you do photography, the way I do photography with my clients uh, even back then, it's it's everything. Like you're you're emotionally connected. How can I make this person feel comfortable? You are building sets. I'm big on building sets, and then it's all technical stuff. So left brain, right brain, physical body, emotional connection. So two hours, I felt like I've been disconnected the world for like three days. It's wonderful. 
And, and the very first time I, I got a girl to, to pose, it was it was so cute because I do nudes, right? So remember now, this is a whole different world. Uh, Calgary has about 400,000 people, highly conservative. And boudoir photography did not exist. It was kind of, there was a glamour version of it. It was very, that back then there was just, no one was doing this, especially in Calgary. So I'm a realtor and I walk into my, my, my brokerage, a guy that did uh, loans for us and mortgages. And this really cute secretary. So I go in there, second floor building. And I go, so after dollar business, I said, so you think Karen would, you know, like do some modeling for me and do the photography side? I don't know, he says. So my brain, I'm thinking what's going to happen is I'll leave it with him. I will come back and he will ask her and he'll, fall, like, it's kind of like a high school thing. You know, ask Susie if, you know, if her girlfriend Karen wants to go for a date, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what he did. He presses the intercom and says, Karen, could you come in? I go, oh my God, no. And <laughs> what crossed my brain was, I leap out that, because there's another door, right? So I'm thinking, but this crossed my thought, leap out that window. Where it's only two stories <laughs> up. Like, what the hell? <laughs> And so I'm, I'm looking at this girl because this is not my, and she walks in. She's really cute. And she's adorable. And she's like 18, 19. And he says, yes. He says with a little pad to make notes. And he says, oh, Mark. So I'm thinking he will ask the question. I will nod to see if she goes. Oh. And he's, he's, a, he's like in his 40s, right? And I'm this young pup. And he goes, Mark's got a question for you. And I look at him. These big eyes go, her. And she says, yes. This is a little point. Oh, yeah. So like I'm a photographer and I'm like doing photography stuff because I'm a photographer. And you look beautiful. And I was wondering if you'd like to like do a model for one of my Western projects kind of thing. I stumbled through this thinking, oh, my God, she's going to push me out the window. And she goes, that sounds like fun. We should do that. <laughs> and so we got guns in and we built this huge elaborate set. And I compartmentalized. So I did this too. But the shot that drove the whole Western set was this nude. I had a girl from Playboy. And she had a gun belt on, cowboy boots, a hat, and she's blowing smoke. But she's nude. It's the funnel thing. And... Uh, and we get to that, and she goes, I said, what about this? And she says, yeah, we should do that. And I go, I couldn't say the word new then. So I go, like, you mean like everything, like, you know, just the hat, the gun, and the belt? Yeah, just like that. And so she had dressed. And we did the photo shoot. We had a great time. It was wonderful. And I go to bed that night, and boy says, so what did she look like? I said, I don't know. I just, I'm not, like, it doesn't sink in. Like, when I, I compartmentalize it in my brain. So I didn't. I didn't really register her. Like I said, so I see the photographs, I'll know. And they were, they were amazing. That was, for me, I was really happy. Actually, a couple of them we still have access to today. They're really cool. So, so that's how we got into photography. And then we did that for a while. I was struggling because whenever I was, I was, whatever I was doing, real estate or photography, I was, if I was doing real estate, I think, oh man, I really, she looks so good naked in my basement. But I never said that to any client, of course. <laughs> Even back then, I was that smart. Uh -huh. And, um, and then I, and so I was wishing to, you know, go into photography. And then when I was doing photography, I think, oh, I should be out in real estate making the big bucks, right? So it's like a miserable year. My wife, Jan, says, you know, listen, women seem to really like and resonate with you doing this. Why don't you give that up? Because it, it really, you're, you've lost interest in it. Like, I can see that. But you seem to love this. And so she stayed on a horrible job for about two, three years longer than she would have normally. It was it was a the best you could hope for is if the se president secretary died, you could maybe move up to his her spot. That was the that was the the echelon. It was a horrible place, but she stayed there for three years, and I and I hit the point where I could carry all the bills, and so she quit. And I said, you can you can do what you want now. Like you've earned, you give me this great gift. You can do whatever you want. And she drifted back into retouching, which was cute. She she learned how to retouch. Back then, we had to retouch on the negative. And then retouch on the print. So it'll, she, I, I bought her this, this very powerful microscope. So she's taken this course. And you can tell my team, I love this stuff. I'm just excited. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're retouching the negatives. And the girl says, okay, so bring in a, a print. We'll retouch the print. And Jan says, well, what size of print should I bring in? And she says, well, whatever you normally bring in, whatever you normally work on, bring that in. Now, most people back then, 8 by 10 is considered big. Most people do it 5 by 7 and 4 by 5. So that's what they brought in. I normally sold 40 by 50 inch prints, 30 by 40, 40 by, so that's like the size of a door, okay? <laughs> and nude. So Jan walks in with this thing and they look at her kind of, she says, well, um, where are we gonna put this? She said, what do you got? She's like, well, I got this, it's, it's this big. Yes, it's really big. <laughs> and uh, she said, well, we'll put some desks together. They couldn't, they, they can't imagine what's in this tube, right? So she rolls this thing out. And it's, it's like a three-quarter nude, so the, the breasts are the size of people's heads kind of thing. And, <laughs> and she's retouching this large nude, and people are like, I'm the late by 10 prints. <laughs> My God. <laughs> and she was amazing. She, and she did the makeup and hair, and her talent was really 
getting people comfortable. So we have a whole process that we go through. We, we stumbled off by accident, actually. I was, I, normally I'd build these big sets and we'd, I'd talk to people before we did it. And this is before it all became trendy to do these things. And then this one lady I was going to photograph, we never quite got together. So one day she just showed up and said, here I am, I'll take my clothes off and we'll do, we'll do a photo shoot. And it was the most awkward photo shoot because we had no idea what we we're doing. We didn't, had not connected with her. I struggled to get like 10 shots taken. And they were pretty, but there was no magic and stuff that I love. And so I thought, huh, let's look at that. So that became our model. So we'd always we'd talk to people first. This is before Zoom and stuff. We were talking decades ago, the 80s. And we, what they want to do, we'd, we'd bring sets. One girl was so cute. She brought in a, three suitcases. And they were full of laundry. This is the planning stage. Mm-hmm. I said, so she, I'll show you my, my laundry so you can kind of do what I want. And I said, okay. She opens the first one up and it just it kind of pops open, right? And it's just full of laundry. And she goes, she looks at me kind of sheepishly. She says, okay, so... You have to understand, whenever I get depressed, I go and buy laundry and it cheers me up. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's uh, good. Good. So open the second suitcase. The third suitcase is crammed and it just opens it up. Laundry pops out and she looks really sheepish. And she says, you got to understand, sometimes I just pretend I'm depressed. (laughs) It's hilarious. (laughs) So so we got into that and we did. um, And so we started because there's, there's no, there's no training managers back. I mean, today everyone's used to, I mean, Today, there's so many places you can get knowledge. Like you pick up a camera and there's how to do's everywhere. Like it's the simplest of things. Back then, there was no traveling photographers. There was no YouTube or anything like that. And there's nobody teaching nude photography or boudoir photographers. Boudoir photography is just starting to emerge. So it, down in the States, all the way up here. Um, but I, I'd come across, I found this one book one time. And the guy says, okay, so if you look at a photograph, you can figure out what type of light they've got by, by the shadows in the face, right? The shadows of the body. So I'm getting my hair cut in this, it's called Figaro. And I'm looking at this Playboy centerfold because it was a men's place, those Playboy festivals. I'm looking at this, I'm studying it. I'm not seeing the girl. I'm, I'm seeing the shadow on like her nose and the breast and, and, a, and a thing she's got on the side there. And then I imagine, okay, so got to be up here someplace and it's got to be a harsh light because it's a harsh shadow. So this is what I'm trying to build. I'm trying to imagine how playboy lit this naked woman but not actually seeing the girl because i'm busy on the light i lose track of time so this old guy's beside me his name gets called and he gets up and and he's before he leaves he pauses says so do you like that girl son <laughs> i've been looking at her for like 20 minutes and i just really had I said, oh i guess she's fine but that wasn't it wasn't there and so that became that was sort of the start we experiment a lot i i what you see down here was my studio originally this is right now meet people mm-hmm. um but we had this is about 40 feet long no, 20 feet long. And um, we built the studios in the back. We'd hang stuff from the ceilings. And I, I painted the rafters and so had lights up there. And and uh, we had one so we got for my sister and, and she wanted to be a model. So I I was going to just do it for her. My parents said, no, she's got to learn, be responsible. So I said, okay, Julie, we'll, I'll just charge you whatever it costs me. So whatever the session costs, that's what she said. Oh, that's really good. Thank you, Mark. That's so wonderful, bigger brother. And she was like a massive age difference, so I think 16 years difference. So I bought, I just bought these lights secondhand. There's three of them, so I'm so proud of my lights. And I got this whole thing rigged up, the high key stuff. There's two in the back, one in the front. Suddenly, halfway through the photo session, the one in the back explodes. And there's this like there's this cloud of of looks like a small atomic bomb kind of went off to it. My sister, she's sharp. She looks back, looks at me, is Mark, and I go, yeah, I'm just like, I just bought these, right? I'm crushed because I can barely afford them. Is Mark? And I go, yeah. Is that a cost? <laughs> I go, no, it's not a cost. Oh, good. Then I'm really sorry that your light blew up. <laughs> Let's get this straight. Um, yeah. And then one day, so we're doing, start off doing lingerie. And this is still my origin story, I guess. And it was like, so back then it was layers of lingerie, you know, the stuff layers. I was getting a bit bored by doing, we had lots of clients, but it was just like lingerie, lingerie. So I decided for a break, I do some body sculptures. And so I came across a, a girl, she was a, a model at a um, an art college. So she was used to striking a pose and holding it while the photographers or painters got their act together and did their thing, right? I'm the opposite. I'm used to having everything ready to go, then coaxing the woman until she hit the right spot, then taking the photograph, right? So this girl, she strike a pose. I was ready to take the photograph. And we like, well, that was odd. And we, I think we took like 75 photographs in 20 minutes because she was good and she struck a pose. I was ready to take a shot. And that was the start of the whole thing. So we put those out and people, women are like, oh, I can do that. 
And so suddenly we shifted from lingerie to nude. And that, and, and one of the things that's been interesting is we, and we're the only studio because we, we were changing women's lives at that point. And so the doctor thing was fascinating because they, uh, uh, they would do, have women come in for abuse. They've been raped, they've been beat up, horrible things. But every now and then a woman would leap one or two stages of recovery. And the probe is like what happened. And every time they did, my name came up. And so they came to talk to me. It's like, what's, what are you doing here? So I'm for acting naked ladies. So, well, that makes, that's unusual because they've, they've been raped. So they're very sensible about their body. So yeah, it's a very safe space. I was, I was like 25. So I was cockier than I should have been. <laughs> and so they did a whole year study on us. And they, they talked to every client before their photo shoot, right after their photo shoot. And then many, many months later. And they discovered to the woman there was dramatic changes. And they also found that if we photographed them, because they often said they'd, they'd meet with the people when they were um, uh, with their friends. And so this one time he had, he had talked to them much later. And he said, it's interesting because what happens in the brain is they see a photograph of yourself and they look amazing. And your brain goes, oh, that's who you are. And so it subconsciously does things to keep that look. So if you look slender in the photograph, if you look beautiful, then it works to do that. You don't even notice. They just spend more time to make up. But their friends never had that. So when he met them years later, the friends, same friends are there. But he noticed she hadn't changed a whole bunch. Her friends, she said, they looked like they kind of starting to go to seed. Like, like there was no, no, no basis for them. And so it's neat. But we've done over the years, we've photographed over five, fifty, two hundred women, I think. Which is kind of cool. We had uh, CB and CBC. Uh, that's one of the, one of the national... Um, TV stations here, they spent four days doing video of me and talking to clients and something four days. This is like an hour long program. They got good stuff. So they're doing the last bit to walk away. And I asked them, said, so how, uh, how long, you know, how long is this going to air for? I go, is it an hour, half an hour? Look, we come in. No, he says, you're going to get like 15 minutes. Really? Like four days, 15 minutes? Yeah, it's TV. I'm crushed, right? I guess it showed my face because it's probably respectful because this is free advertising. Mm -hmm. He says, son, so if the president of the United States gets shot, He'll get five minutes. You'll still get your 15. Oh, okay. That's, that's different. <laughs> it's all relative. And so we, yes, yeah, so it's all relative for it. And then we were here in the studio here of my downstairs location for about uh, 10 years. And then we, we built a studio outside and it's got 12 foot ceilings and there's a bathroom out there, of course, spiral staircase. And it's really a cool place. We bring Harley Davidson there to be photographed and whatnot. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been, it's my playpen, heated floors. So women come in and do the makeup there. I mean, it's a lot of fun. So, anyways, that's kind of my backstory, I guess. Is that filling the gaps a bit? We, we won a lot of awards along the way because I love what I do and I like to enter contests. So we, we used to famous people for a while. Um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, they were, uh, they were neat. We, some, they were all, we had, uh, Dave McCullum in at the time and he was, he was, he was out here with, he was doing the photo shoot and, and he was just, charming guy he was like so cool he's my dog came up and curled at his feet he's like, oh, it's so cool and he's like and he can show my nudes in the wall and uh he says oh my gosh i should get my wife up here jill she would she would love this kind of stuff i got a photo so he goes in his wall and he pulls up this photograph of her and it looks it's in the backyard you know your, your audience can imagine this so imagine you're in the backyard your husband's been bugging you there's nobody else around. And he's like, you want to take a naked photograph? So you just take off your clothes. You stand there with the barbecue. Like, they happy now. Mm -hmm. And then you put your clothes back on. You finish cooking, right? And that's what the photograph looked like. It was this, mm -hmm. it was this midday, horribly lit. And yeah, you could do it much better. She'd kill me if I, she knew I was showing this to you, but, mm -hmm. but I should get you come in for a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we've done that. We've done a lot of famous uh, female stars, politicians. We've done a, uh, some high-end politicians because we're very, um, just we like people. If we photograph a woman, no we have a female staff uh, and the books get printed in Italy. There's a female staff working the castle. So nobody sees the stuff except the girls that goes through them. And it's all pre-built. Um, so if women feel really, really safe, that's the key thing. And this is now, this is a cool thing. If a woman is photographed by a safe male photographer, it's, there's a chemical change in their brain. This is something I just learned a couple months ago and they become bolder, more confident, more creative, and more, they speak up more, like they're more assertive. And, and that will happen in minutes when they kind of go through it. And they just, this, all this huge change thing happens. It doesn't happen with the female photographer. 
they're, they're flirty. They also get kind of, they'll be flirty because like in our studio, this is so cute. Um, I've been married for we're coming up 50 years now. And Jan's part of the business. I just adore her completely. And um, and so a, a client asked me one time, she said, do you, have you ever been hit on? I said, no, I, no, I, that doesn't happen. I, I'd spot that. Mm-hmm. She said, uh, you know, we slowed down. She's, and after the session, she says, you know, I, th- I think you'd think you missed the point because if a girl wants to get a guy's attention, we can undo a, a button or two and we're new, that's already done. Mm-hmm. And so we strike a provocative pose because that would work. And, and you go, oh, hold on, that's a good pose. And then every... 10 minutes you're talking about your wife so i got a feeling that you probably were hit on you just didn't notice it because your radar is not there at all <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work um but yeah so it's it's been neat we've gone uh, traveled the world doing this it's you have a camera and a friend said this one time he says yeah when you're when you have a camera you say i'm a photographer that's much better than say i'm a bum because i'm just like bumming around <laughs> and so and, and it's a tax write-off <laughs> Can yeah I, it's like yeah, this is the yeah this is the whole thing i've been through three of my cameras now on my my camera systems i've been this for so long three of my cameras have op- gone obsolete like the mm-hmm. one i currently have it still works but it's so obsolete they can't get parts for it we'll look at there's a new version come up we'll probably be getting that and we also started playing with our camera um, but we also done special effects like we we had one recently and there's so we have the normal stuff. Women come in, they go, ah, oh, I'm looking hot. Again, a girl came in one time. She's like 25. And so why do you want to do this? And she goes, oh, well, because this is looking really good right now, but it could fall apart any day. <laughs> I go, okay. Photographs before you fall apart. And then two days later, a girl comes in. She's like 58. And I said, so why do you want to do this? Oh, she says, this, this is looking pretty good, but it can fall apart at any day. <laughs> so it really depends. Where are you at in your sense of beauty? Um, so we get the people come in, they're looking for a bench. They'll have a lot of fun and they're really good. We will get women in, we have women in who are dying. And this one, at least my mind in particular, she, she was really determined because by the time the prints were made, cause there's a time frame for it to do and stuff, even when we speed things up, she would never see what we're creating, so she would not see it. And so she would, she brought her, her, her daughters and her husband in. And, and so what would you like? of me kind of like i'm off to college we'll be gone for six months and how you just remember it she'll be gone forever and she said when we're doing the photo session i want photographs for my kids they'll never forget who i am and, and my mirth all this kind of stuff and that's closed on of course but then she said i want to photograph my husband that shows him how much i love him so this this disease it's going to take my life but it's not going to take my spirit it's not going to take my passion it's not going to take my love for him and, and i want you to put that on film so he can have that and there'll be a note in the back that also says, don't, don't stop with me. You know, find another love of your life. But this is my cherished gift to you. And it, okay, we had one girl that came in, um, her very spiritual woman. And her son had just died. Like, they hadn't had the funeral. He died like a week ago. And the funeral was like in four days or something. And she was a mess because in her belief and her faith that she believed that her God would give her challenges so she could grow, but he would, the contract she had with him is he would never hurt her children. He would, he would always, his job was to protect her children. And her son died suddenly. And so that just, that whole contract. So she was in a crisis of a faith, crisis, crisis, crisis of faith. And of course now and she's in her fifties. So she's not a young spring, you know, the traditional beauty kind of girl. And so she was crying. She was upset. She's, she's nervous about doing this kind of thing. The backstory for her was 10 years earlier, her son, she had gotten a card from us to do a photo session. A girlfriend convinced her not to do it. There's better things you can do with your money. Obviously, the girlfriend had her own session done somebody else. But her son kept on saying, you should do this. It'd be good for you. You look beautiful. Did it for 10 years. Then he dies. So for her, this was a way to honor him. This was something he believed she should do. So she went ahead to do it. She was terrified. She had this whole thing. And so we talked for like 45 minutes so I could bring her into a space. And my assistant was watching. I get used to women. Because I can see this transition when you go from this nervous person to this powerful being. And it's really neat to see. And so my assistant was watching this. And so this all happened like over two hours. So we got her good space. She had a photograph of him, a feather because he's indigenous. Um, he, somebody had randomly given her daffodils, which was his favorite flower and colors. I was doing a water set. So we have a 10 foot by... 16 foot pond in my studio when I put a reflective board on top of her that was for, reinforced with steel. And she's laying on top of it with this, with this native dress and she's looking down at the reflection because it's like glass. Mm-hmm. I can't see my hands like glass. And, um, and it was so serene. 
and she made this, you could just, her whole body quivered and shook and it was, suddenly she was calm and she was just, it was an amazing photograph. And she, she that's the one she put up on display for the, for his funeral. And she had aligned, everything had clicked. She had accepted her son's death. She had reconnected with her faith, everything. She went on, we we're doing these nudes for hers, which which she was something that she had not planned on doing at all. You cross the barrier of confidence that you're gonna look good, you trust the environment. And there you kind of go, which is kind of kind of neat. So do you have any questions? I'm, I'm rambling on. Yeah, well, you're telling wonderful stories. So why not let you <laughs> keep going? So, you know, some, okay. of, some of the things, you, you know, you said, like one of them is, well, um, once someone sees themselves in the photograph, looking the way they do, that yeah. does imprint something on your mind yeah, that, about the way you look. I mean, I, I have this mirror in my house that hangs mm -hmm. on this door that's kind of across from the front door. And yep. and even though it doesn't really match in in that mm -hmm. room, I leave <laughs> yeah. it there. You know why? Because every mm -hmm. time I look in that mirror, it, it makes me look thinner. So every day mm -hmm. I walk in front of that mirror and I look at myself and I see myself thinner and mm -hmm. there's something unconscious that makes it so that I choose yeah. better food. I choose yeah. to be, you know, exercise and take care of myself mm -hmm. because I see myself like that. Oh yeah. It's, uh, uh, this is something to share. So what you have is an expensive mirror. And what that means is the glass is thicker. So what happens with the thin mirrors that people buy in the stores normally, they act like a house of fun mirrors. They make you look wider. Not like a wet angle lens. Not so much that you bought it. It's enough that your face is wider, your nose is wider, your eyes get smaller, these kind of things. And so and then you have the light up from above, right, in normal bedrooms because it's efficient. If you go to an expensive hotel, go to Vegas, get any high-end hotels, they have these soft, glowing lights around a very thick mirror. You look thinner and the light is, is very delicate in your face. It's just washed. There's no wrinkles. There's anything. It doesn't appear. The normal home has got these wrinkles. So you got this mirror that makes you look wider. You got a light that creates every crevice. It's called a cross line. We use it for texture. I would bring up the texture of my beard. That's what we would use. And so it's it's humiliating. And it's it's and the only time you see it, of course, you just got to bed and you go, I can fix this. And you start. So you see yourself every morning, 365 days, at your worst with conditions that magnify the worst part of it, right? Then you get yourself looking beautiful. You feel better. You go out the door. Everybody sees you at your best but you don't get any more additional feedback. Now, the power of the photography, we had a client who was vastly overweight. We photographed her and she was so thrilled how she looked and she was trying to lose this weight. So nothing was working. So I got a phone call and she said, could you take one of my photographs? We don't normally do this, but she said, could you take my photographs and make me look like I've lost like 150 pounds, mm -hmm. pounds, okay? And so what she did was she had three life-size photographs made from us. We did this alteration with her. She took out all the mirrors in her house and she didn't leave the house for like a month. I think it was two months. Everything came in. The only, and she wasn't wearing a whole bunch of makeup and stuff. So she didn't have, she covered all the mirrors in the house. She could not see herself. The only thing her mind could see was photographs of her 150 pounds less. And she said, by the time month is over, she says, I was on track. I was losing weight. I was eating good. My brain had somehow absorbed. This is me, how it's going to look. And you're, you're talking about how you feel. So we had a client that came in and she was so yeah so i'll tell you stories a little bit so with her she's like in her 40s and she had a couple of kids and she's she was feeling like she really was sexless like she you know, her husband was nice she says he chased him around the house naked kind of stuff but really i just i'm dumpy i'm thinking that's a bad version of dumpy because <laughs> other people would say you're beautiful but anyways we took these photographs and she's i'm looking really good like that's that's the other thing that happens is when you're thinking doing nudes and you see the back, I, I've spent a thousand dollars in Polaroids before we had digital cameras. So women could see what they're looking like, right? They could see what I see. And she's looking pretty good. I said, yeah, you're amazing. So she brought her husband for the viewing. And he says, didn't Mark do an amazing job? And he looks and says, oh, he's like, he got you in focus and he got, he got you properly exposed. That's what I mean. He did amazing stuff. Well, look, you're beautiful. So he got you in focus and he got, got you properly exposed. I mean, no offense, Mark, but she's gorgeous, right? And I go, yeah. But she says, wait a minute. This is how you see me like all the time. This is your rose colored glasses. He says, No rose colored glasses, dear. You are beautiful. And she's just like, oh. now she knew I'd like beg her from the eyes and other bits and pieces. We don't shape, reshape people, we just clean them up as you would like 
polish them. Let's go with polish. And she just felt like a million dollars. She just, it was just incredible. Um, and a lot of women go to great lengths to uh, have fun. So this, what one I got, her husband was a, a top divorce lawyer in Cal- Calgary. So very glib kind of individual. He loved James Bond. So she came in for a new photo shoot. And then she arrives early and she wanted this whole James Bond experience, right? So he, she talked to him wearing his James Bond suit. So he got this whole, he's really deep into it. On the, on the hint that right after work, they're going to go to dinner with her sister, right? This is working. He calls her and he says, listen, your sister's not showing up. He says, no, she's not going to come. Um, instructions in the car. And he had a Jaguar, mm-hmm. very high-end individual. He goes down the Jaguar and the Jaguar, there's a note that says, tonight you are James Bond. <laughs> there's a water pistol. So it, it leaked water pistol, a little bit leak and a rose in his pocket thing and put this cassette tape in his car. So he put that in there and hit play. And this is, this goes back a bit. So it's he does. And so it says, tonight you're James Bond. Um, clues, got to drive. So she gave him driving. So she goes, he goes to this end of town. That's not his place. Right. And he says, great. Across the street, you should see a telephone booth. Mm-hmm. And underneath it, there's a phone number to phone for more instructions. So he, and, and give this password. It was a very key password. Like women have, like tushes, but it was much more erotic than that. It was embarrassing to say. So he go, dashes across this dangerous street, gets in this grimy phone booth, finds the phone number, dials us, and I'm in the house here, and he says, hi, um, I'm James Bond. Women have nice tushes. I said, and I'm trying not to laugh, right, because it's like freaking hilarious. And I go, oh, yes, we've been waiting for you. 711 84th Avenue, Southwest. Bye. And I hung up, right? So he shows up. And this is, again, this is not a our neighborhood, this nice neighborhood, but it is not a, uh, you know, a, a car of his caliber. It's just inside his, his place. Anyways, parks up front. You can see him tapping things. It was like, okay. So he comes to the front door and he goes, meanwhile, she's come downstairs here. We do our viewing down here. This eight foot screen that comes down. So people see their images eight feet by eight feet. And he looks around and he says, look, and my wife, Jan's answering the door, right? And he says, look, I'm, uh, I'm James Bond, agent 007. Women have nice tushes. And she says, oh, yes, follow me. And so she leads him in the kitchen. And I then take, I say, hi, I'm your guide tonight. He goes, okay. So we take him downstairs. He said, now she, I'm, she, I thought she'd be down here, but she's not. Right? And so he's sitting down. And I got the slideshow. And I look around. I'll just start the slideshow. So we hit the music, hit the play. And this image comes up and she's dressed. And as it starts to fade to a nude, she comes out. We have a little a utility closet. And she comes out and she's naked. And she's got two wine glasses, right? And she leans forward. And of course, there's this breast in his head and this naked woman in the front. He jolts up and she says, hi, dear. And she hands him this glass. And his eyes are huge. And he's like, he's also could say, this is amazing. Like you're true. He was like, so she sat pretty corner to him. And she, she she was having too much fun. She's like bouncing breasts. And she's just just distracted. And she's having a hell of a time. And she's up the screen. She's new over here. It was a whole bit. So for about an hour, we got this like, you're amazing. These are incredible. Or else you're incredible. These are amazing. That's all we got for the whole thing. And uh, you see, I have no idea what to expect from her. This, it was just so over the top and she just had a ride with it. So we do, we've got stuff like that. That's kind of, it's been kind of fun. Yeah, that, that's, that is quite a story. So, um, you know, when I first met you and I, you were talking mm-hmm. about your work, I thought to myself, you say you, you talk women through this or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think if I arrive somewhere and even though, you know, we've had a couple conversations, I'd still be really hesitant to completely, you know, just yeah, there's a, there's natural. A, <laughs> yeah. No, there's a flow, especially if, especially women who are older, like, Oh my God, we take this off and you're seeing scars and wrinkles and all the stuff I'm nervous about. So and to give you an idea how nervous people get, because there is a flow you go through. So we had a client, a little, little tiny thing, little spitfire. Now she was used to standing on a stage and having 20 to 50 multimillionaires in front of her and say, by the way, that $50 million investment you gave me, it tanked, lost it all, never coming back. I got something else you can blow your money on. Not blind, blink an eye, right? So she comes into our studio, we book a photo session. I said, so are you all organized? This is when she's in the downstairs in the, in the studio area. And she says, oh yeah. I said, so did you, break, did you so I, I just, Pretend I'm just coming to see you. Like she showed me your point book. It's, it doesn't say your know, photo session. It says C Mark, an address. So like, I'm taking my mind out. I'm just, and she's having a hard time talking. She's almost incoherent. 
cool. And, and usually when women want are nervous and they, 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 are, they don't want to do nudes, or they think they have clothing with them, right? But she had none. I said, so do you bring some clothes in the car? No, she says, that'd be like packing for, oh my God, no clothes, I don't have to be naked. I never thought this through. <laughs> so we got something to wear. And so it, um, it becomes a process. So Jan, they sit down with Jan, they're very, very nervous, but they're in the studio so they can start to own the space. And they, she sits down and Jan, that was her talent is she would just get people feeling incredible and feeling confident, this would be incredible. And then I'd, I'd build sets. So there's a whole bedroom set uh, and there's like a castle ruins and a spiral staircase and a badass back alley. We have a Harley Davidson in. So we have all these different things and they can see the back of the camera. And so they start off very apprehensive and they go away. Like one girl, she's a heavier girl. She goes, so she's looking at the back of my camera, the digital camera, right? And she goes, so well, that's a cool camera. That's, that's a professional camera. I go, yes, it is. So you take the photograph and there's already pre-built bodies in there and the camera puts my head in somebody else's body is that what happens <laughs> no not that professional the camera this is what you look like in front of my camera and i do i do lighting and camera techniques to make people look amazing right that's my as i get paid for you don't make much money as a photographer if you make people look dumpy i just i tried that for a couple of years they say you know find a niche do what no one's doing nobody's offering the service of making people look dumpy found out that was why no one bought photographs anyways um, so she, she had a lot hard times realizing that was her because of, of her, her image of herself. And we had to take all, all sides. We had, I think the biggest girl was 200 plus pounds. And that was, and we just, and like, there's no judgment here. It doesn't matter, um, you know, your religious beliefs, your clothing you want to wear. As long as you're not a murderer, I don't do murderers. But <laughs> beyond that, it's, it's a pretty respectful place. And so we can kind of come in and be brave. We've had, um, the space gets so safe. We had a girl that came in and she was, her doctor had said, you've got to go to some places, a place that is both scary and safe. And that was going to trigger something in your mind and then come and talk to me and it'll, it'll be good because she, she was missing years and years of her life. And she was, she was trying to slowly with the help of this doctor, get the max. So we come to my studio. We're having a great time. And then she sits down on the couch. She has this really odd look in her face. And are you, are you okay? Like something happened. She says, I just, my doctor said that when I was in, if I got to a place that was kind of scary, but turned out to be really, really safe, my brain would feel comfortable and would unlock part of my past. And it, it just did that. And I said, oh, that, that's cool. Yeah. She says, it turns out my memory is that my parents thought they'd killed me and they went, they drove for 20, 40 miles and threw me in a ditch and then left. And somebody found me and that's why I don't have parents. And that just, that just whole thing just opened up. They go, yeah. So. This is beyond my skills. Out, <laughs> you want to take this to your doctor? I'm glad. And she said, "Well, thank you for this. This is what we kind of needed." And so that became. That's how dramatic the experiences can be. What we do. We had one girl who was. Um, she had multiple personalities, and she um, she came in and we we're we brought a girl with her who later told me was a handler. And we we're doing we we're doing a photo session. Randomly, she'd say, "No, you can't photograph your thing. I go over there." But we would make a good photograph, nicer. I'd be naked. I'm not going to be naked. She'd make these decisions that were contradictory, but if we want, we can do that. So after the session, her voice changed. She says, I want a photo session. I go, yeah, we're doing that now. No, I want the photo session. Uh -huh. And it, all of a sudden, this handler is coming towards the camera. I'm looking at her face. Says, yeah, so that's what we're doing. No, nope. it's Rosie's photo session. No, it's, it's yours. It's, yours. it's okay, Mark. It's okay. She's got multiple personalities, and they're emerging because uh -huh. they all feel safe in this space. Go, oh, that's okay. So they got out and saw so she talked to me. So, yeah, so we're going to do a photo session for each one personality. They're really excited about doing this. Very bizarre experience talking to them all at once. Doesn't usually happen. So, a couple of weeks go by. She comes back and she's like, I got good news and bad news. I go, it's the good news. I love good news. As well, the good news is that breakthrough in your studio has, was a wonderful breakthrough. And the doctor is now alchemizing all my. Me into one person. So it's all come together. The dangerous situation, my brain finally recognizes the dangerous situation is gone. I'm in a safe place and I got safe people. And I can, I can be, I can be safe. Well, that's, that's great. What's the bad news? Just me now. I don't need more shots from either person. <laughs> <laughs> the way, the way it kind of went, but uh, it's, it's, um, it's fun. And we are talking about passion because this is what your whole, whole thing's about, right? Mm -hmm. And there's that phrase that do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And that's really where I've arrived. And it's I had a friend one time, he says, so Mark, imagine, I'm yeah, getting older. 
And so my 50s, he says, so what were you going to do when you retire? I said, I, I don't see that happening. Like, I really like this. And you're making the cameras lighter and smaller and easier. So if I go blind, autofocus is helping. <laughs> don't worry, close your eyes. Well, imagine you wake up in the morning. You can do anything you want to do in the world. Like you could do, you can do anything. You can collect stamps. You can take a walk, like anything you want to do. What would that be? You go, oh, I'd find a really neat lady. I'd photograph her nude. Wait a minute, I'm doing it already. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, I'm going to retire. But it's it's true when you and this one there I've been so successful. I believe is that because creativity, creativity is a learned thing. Like everybody thinks it's you just you're inherently, and it's it's not. It's it's choices. Like you you sit down and you say, okay, so I want a happy photograph. Well, that means all the dark, gloomy possibilities you are going to work on. I want a vertical photograph. Okay, so that means you're going to be laying down. So as you make a choice. Options disappear. And that's what creativity is. It's eliminating options until you have the creative thing in front of you. And, and that's the, the joy of it. So you, I started because I loved what I was doing. I would go to great lengths. And then I'd be proud of something. So I'd enter in a contest. We would win the contest. And then we improved ourselves. We kept on getting better and more gadgets and so on. And it doesn't matter what your passion is. Like mine happened to be photography. Whatever it is, you will become good at it. Because you love it. And if you love something, you go that extra mile. Whereas if it's just a job, if it's something that you're... So the difference between... There's a, a guy we said called strategic coach, and he says there's stuff we're bad at. And there's things we can do well. And there's stuff we can do really well. And then there's our sweet zone, our, our genius, if you will. And the more you can do in there, but people try to trap you down into either doing stuff you aren't good at down here... Um, because they think you should improve yourself or else they're trying to do the stuff that you're good at. But really, and that's going to go with singers. You'll see a singer. Um, they don't do anything. Like there's a, a Celine Dion, for example. Uh, she comes in. She doesn't even talk. Her sister interprets what her needs are. So her voice is being protected. Other guys are like whipping around. There's managers, there's accountants, there's all these people doing stuff. He just sings. Football players, they just do football. This is their thing. This is their passion and they excel at it's not what they're good at, it's what they're excel at their amazing thing. And so if you can get out of that what you're good at zone, it's what your passion is, you can make so say you can make so much money, and that, that's true. But I've been finding as I talk for women through my other program, which is fascinatingwomen.com, that a lot of women, people have different measurements of what success is. And so you can make an amount of money that's comfortable. Let's say your passion is something that's not could bring you billions of dollars. But your success is you're making enough money to make your to make your life nice, but you live your life in this happy space. Like, I mean, I'm just watching your face. I know what you do is, is your passion as well. Like you, this is your zone. You you start talking to people and you just glow and this is going as it should be. I'm in the same way. I, I get behind my camera, and the world disappears. It's just it's just me and my I I, I go up to now for four hour photo shoot. It's like I'm gone for for a week. It's just so I, when you in your passion, you're living in the moment. When you're doing something you're good at, part of your brain is going, "Yeah." So I get through this. I got that neat vacation thing I'm doing. But you're you're living in your brain's only half there because your brain wants to go where your passion is. So whatever your passion is, your brain's kind of doing that, wishing it was there. And I had the fortune, a very good fortune, of a wife that recognized that before I did and said, "Like, dump this, go with that. We'll make it work somehow." And and so we did. That's that drive the passion is is everything and then of course when you're happy because you got to look after yourself first like if you aren't if you aren't thrilled with who you are that's part of what happens my photography is when people see who they are and we a client came in a while ago and i said what do you want to accomplish with your photograph she said i want to find i'm just divorced i'm lost and somewhere i lost that 25 year old girl that was fearless and was going to change the world and i want her back mm -hmm. and then her photo session she found that so and then she really her life changed because she she dumped her job and did all sorts of stuff. But but your your passion does that. You get into it and suddenly you're at ease. Your self health, I guess, is the new phrase of self healing. And you and you can tell. Here's a cool thing I can you can tell. You can tell if you are at ease with yourself. You take a photograph, straight on photograph, flat lighting, so there's no shadows or anything, right? Okay. Get two prints made. Cut the photograph of each one dead down the center and put the right and the right together and the left and left together. Now, if you are at peace with yourself, which means there's no inner conflict 
of anything, morally, business-wise, whatever, okay? They will, you put the two together and they will be the same. However, if you're in conflict, one side of your face gets tighter. Now, the first time I saw this, it was a Catholic priest. And he looked like a nice individual with his shop. But the guy took the photograph and cut it in half. So one side, my God, he looked like a saint, like the warmest individual you could ever imagine. It was the right, right hand side. It was, he just, he could come with any problem, any concern with the left hand side. It was like the devil. He's like mean and nasty. And if you got near him, he'd take your soul and rip it shreds. Like it was just this horrible, horrible thing. Very dramatic difference. But if you do that, you can tell if you're, and it will change from time to time. When you're in your zone, your face leaving right out. So it's not like you're stuck with this face. Um, when you are in your zone, when you're happy and the world inside you is aligned, this, you, you have this, what's, you know, like the, the a balanced face. Like you just, it looks like you're the right hand's left hand side. So people say it looks peaceful, it looks symmetrical, all those things. Symmetrical faces are simply people who are at peace with themselves. That's all it is. And if you're not, you should look at, at like, where's that thing? Because it's, it's, it's killing you. Like it's, 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 you, you can't, you have a hard time going forward. Um, it's just, it just branks at your subconscious the whole bit. But once you find your passion, your, your, your peace, you get a symmetrical face and then it's easier for me to photograph you. That is so cool. So um, do you have time to show us some photos? I do. I okay. do. Why don't I'll you share bring them your up. screen and show us some of your work? And okay. try and describe it a little bit as you do it. So the people who are listening on the on the podcast, just audio, you're going to have to go to YouTube to actually see it. And also Mark has yeah. a website where he has a lot more photos that you can see. Yeah, that's innerspiritphoto.com. And there's, I just looked at, there's a whole pile of share screen. There we go. And we will pick this screen here. Very good share. Okay, good. So now what you're seeing, that's good. You're now screen sharing. Very good. This appears good. Okay. Um, yeah, sweet. Okay. No, nope, don't do that. Good. Okay. So the right-hand side, and we, we carefully picked ones with clothes on, so no one's going to get in trouble. And this is, mm -hmm. this is safe for work photographs, anywhere you work. Um, so with boudoir photography, there's this myth that you've got to be young and good looking before you can be photographed. Okay. You probably all heard that. This woman came in for her photo shoot at 70 years old. For years, I've been, I'm photographing. She, she great? Yeah. And uh, every time I asked her, because I photographed her, her, she's a single mom with her boys as they're growing up. And she said, no, no, I don't want to photograph. This is my family, but my boys. Um, so all of a sudden, I got this phone call saying, so I'm, it was like six months out. Booking you for a photo session. It's going to be a boudoir thing, right? And so about, did I make up done? I'm about to leave. My assistant says to me, oh, did you, do you, you got your stuff? And I said, yeah, we're going to do it. should be long though, because it's, you know, Rona. And she said, have you read her sheet? And I said, no, but it's Rona. It's just, you should read the sheet. So I'm reading the sheet. And she had, she wanted erotica. She wanted, she brought, bought corsets. There was the whole range of stuff that she was, that she was wanting to do. I go, okay. So we did the whole nine yards. She felt so powerful. She took, she took an ad out in the sun, a newspaper that said, 70 woman looking for like age man, purpose, mutual spoiling. Mm -hmm. Seven or eight guys responded. One guy, she really hit them off with uh, there. He took her to, for Valentine's Day to a, um, a to Banff and she brought her book along and, and he's also divorced. He's in like, he's like late sixties and he opened his book up. He goes, Oh my God. He says, this, this can't be wandering around un untethered, so to speak. we got to get married. <laughs> and so she got, we've had 30 photo sessions result directly in marriages. Wow. <laughs> which is kind of cool. Okay. Now this girl is, is a sweetheart. She's really neat. Uh, this was done as a, as a surprise gift for him. And, but really it was just for her. Now my bed's cool. So what my, it looks really soft and comfy, doesn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. It's a, uh, it's a half inch board of plywood with two crossbars. That's about, about maybe eight inches lower than a regular bed is. So when people put their feet over it, their legs look longer because their feet are on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I've got some cushions underneath it, but if you sit on it, it's a pretty hard bed. And then I've got a window off to the side here it's clamped into place and there's curtains hanging down so when you get if you pull out of my photo session you just got this set that like really it's where you are <laughs> it kind of kicks it with that we have old cameras kicking around so people get um get interesting stuff to work with uh, this is my stone ruins hmm. and so i love light is what we paint with and so this this is an actual very very harsh light uh, you can see how sharp the shadow is 
Mm -hmm. So soft light is what people normally use because it's, it just kind of wraps around and glows, but a harsh light, but when I put the orange gel on it and it becomes beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so this was, this was neat. And then we did this and then she stepped into her nudes afterwards. Um, we'll do some couples. This is before I got to the nudes ones. It was, uh, it was really wild to play with. Uh, some kind of sassy things. She was, uh, she was kind of bold. This is a neat pose. So if you ever are wanting to um, make your legs look long, if you kind of come up to the wall and put your legs up at an angle, um, I always have one leg straight and one leg bent. And the one that's bent is towards where the person is being. So we had a client one time. She just loved that certain poses she looked really good in, right? So she, she gets her husband in bed and she says, okay, close your eyes, close your eyes. And then she'd go and just strike the pose. Open your eyes, open your eyes. And she'd, he'd look, wow, yeah, close your eyes, close your eyes. And she'd go over and she'd do another pose, the chair or something. Open your eyes, open your eyes, close your eyes. And, he, and of course, you can see this is affecting, this is working really well. And she worked all around the room. And, says, and can you pose in bed with me now? It was really good. <laughs> so that's the, the kind of stuff that we work with. Uh, we can also get into things where we photograph for guys to white background that we built all this around her. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's neat. We, our files go back to 1979. And so we have clients. We had a client that came in recently and she was looking at her photographs from 1982. And my stuff is timeless. Like it's, we catch the personality. So we're not, they're not trendy photographs. Sometimes they are, but usually they're not. And so they, you, if you look at my photographs, you'll have a hard time saying, was that done yesterday or is that done? You know, although oh, this is fine. I, I photographed, we were, photographers were talking and a girl was photographed high school seniors. And she said, oh, yeah, I, I have to replace every six months. I have to redo my entire portfolio because they're dated. And the girls go, oh my God, that was so last year because the fashion has changed, right? Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the wedding photographer said, I don't understand. Like, I have to replace my portfolio every 12 months because yearly the, the fashion has changed. The portrait photographer goes, yeah, I said, I'm doing family portraits. I got, I got like maybe a two-year window, maybe three. And then I'm going, well, my clients have no clothes on. Laundry is kind of timeless, right? So I'm thinking, well, I really, I have no, no time pretty good. Then a week later, I'm at a trade show and a girl slips through a book and she looks at the skirt and says, that was done in the 80s. Like, how did you know? I said, you're right, but how did you know? Oh, she says, that kind of bush? No one has that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there is stuff that's, that is not quite so timely. But now women have shifted over and, and it's whatever they want, whatever kind of works for them. So it kicks in. We do the occasional guys mm -hmm. and they come in for the same reason. Actually, men are way more self-conscious than women. Huh. Way more self-conscious. We, we have a thing with, um, I call them suits or jocks. And so the jocks, they can be any shape. They're just jocks is more that speaks to them going to a, um, be in a, in a locker room. So they used to be in a locker room, a bunch of guys hanging around. It doesn't mean anything to them. It's just they're over that. But the suits are guys that could be in really good shape, but they've never been nude or semi thing. And they're very self-conscious, right? So the guy comes out and he, he was short and he forgot to bring a robe. So I loaned him mine. Well, I'm tall. And so his robe was like hanging down. So he looked like he was one of the sleepy dwarfs, right? <laughs> and he's trying to be cool. And I first time I back to him, I'm setting the setup, and he says, So here, here, your opinion, Mark, what are the, what are the women, women looking for? And I'm like, because he was so nervous, it just kind of fluctuated all over the place. And then we've, we've got this. So we've got the bondage thing is we're doing shibari now. So shibari is where you, it's the artful design of ropes and stuff. It's very really beautiful. So these chains, I bought them from the Bay, which is a large department store here in town. And they're, they're plastic. They look really ominous, but they're just, if she pushes, they'd just spring apart. Mm -hmm. So it's, so it's kind of cool. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, bikes. Bikes are a blast to work with. Uh, we usually, for a long time, we had a Harley Davis. We brought them in the studio. Uh, we rigged them up. We got a Mylar floor in the mirror. So we get these really neat reflections happening. We just kind of roll them out. And they'll do these neat poses on top of the bikes. In the front. Here's the better shot of the whole bed. Mm -hmm. You're starting to see where it ends. The illusion is ending in the, uh, in the corner down there. Um, but really, you can't tell when this photograph was taken. Mm -mm. And it was taken in the 90s. Is that wild? That is. It's, couples are fun. Uh, when couples come in, they get to spend four hours just indulging their mutual appreciation. So there's a huge, a huge emotional content that kind of happens because of that. Here's another Harley Davis thing to work with. You can get pretty provocative with these kind of things, mm -hmm. but they're, they're sort of fun. I've got a spiral staircase in my studio, a sweep staircase. For some reason, you can see the, the, the it's covered in fabric. I don't know where this came from. In my mind, a staircase is covered in fabric is very rich and opulent and really is probably just a dangerous staircase, but it photographs really, really nicely. Um, 
the the wall on the left hand side there, the brick wall, that's a uh, an old brick, an old um, basement hardboard. You used to mm -hmm. put them up and make your fake fake brick kind of stuff, and it's clamped to a, a, a board at the top, and then it's so that's how it fits there. It's it's just tenuous at best, and then we can change lighting. So I, so here's an open type of light and it's soft, but we can put a light up on the landing there and become a silhouette. So there's all sorts of stuff we can do when we start to play with things. You know, Calgary's Cowtown, so we have little Western sets. Mm -hmm. uh, this woman's in her 40s, and she's a nanny, professional nanny. Uh, the locations are wild. Here's my badass back alley set. Mm -hmm. um, she's a, a secretary. We kind of came into it. And uh, it's like we're laying down. Um, the couches and beds are really cool to work with. So we bring lights to, to bring out the shape and, and make people look really fit. She'd won a contest. She was, and so people get nervous being, for, to be photographed by a professional photographer, there's studies done. That experience is somewhere between um, a root canal and public speaking. <laughs> so people would prefer to go to do public speaking to a large crowd in a large auditorium before that having a professional photo session done. But they prefer to have a professional photo session done before having the root canal. That's where we kind of fit in the <laughs> realm of people. So that's a, that's a lot to kind of kind of work with. Uh, so we have women here that come in and she's in her 20s and and the girls in their 20s are so cool. The biggest thing I hear from women who are in their 40s and 50s and 60s is that they wish they had this done when they had these hot bodies. So a girl in their 20s, they, they got this Ferrari body, but they don't know what to do with it. They can't get on first gear. And they're very uh, apprehensive. They're not too sure if they should do it or not. To nudes and the kids that kind of break through. But they're just adorable. But they're really lost. They have this incredible body and it won't be till, till years later they recognize it. And we'll have a, a girl here. She said, this is 82 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, yeah, whatever. We're good. This is the body I'm used to now. So it, like, and we've also got wings in my studio. Uh -huh. Aren't they beautiful? Mm -hmm. These are made in New York City by an outfit called the Dragon Studios. Mm -hmm. And they are five feet tall. They open up and they are magnificent. They're really, really wild to play with. Um, another bike shot. This is cool. So um, I actually, they had a warbirds in, in Calgary here a while ago. So I photographed all these, these warbird airplanes, World War II. And um, her husband, he was the big Harley guy, of course, but his job was a um, controller, airport controller. And so we photographed her uh, in the back alley of my studio. And so it's outdoor lighting. And then I, then we dropped in this, um, this airplane. Cool. So it was really kind of cool. Uh, and this is mysterious lighting. So we actually, this evolved into a new thing. But you don't have to have a smiling face even to be visible in a powerful photograph. And this is really an effective kind of image that sort of works for it. Uh, outdoors are fun. So we, we go out and we're, people are slinking down. So we, we had one girl one time, we're photographing outdoors and early in the morning. And she had a uh, BMW with the sunroof. And so, and she was really well endowed in the chest area and she was up and she was like posing and topless and actually nude. And we hear this motorcycle coming. And so she's it's getting closer and closer and she's trying to get down without you know, ripping her breasts off. She falls inside and this guy bursts through the bush. She looks around, hi, yeah, nice car. And he, off he goes, right? <laughs> they go back, she's posing again. And then we're, she, we're getting, she comes out, she gets behind the car and we see a police car pull up. So she hides behind the car. <laughs> He's starting to walk towards me, right? And, and these guys, his radar is going like something's off here. And I start walking towards him because I don't want to get too close to the car. Walk around. That's going to be embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And so I said, can I help the officer? He says, yeah. Yeah. And he, he's distracted because he, his radar is going off, but there's nothing he can see is there. I said, he says, yeah. Um, yeah. You're not supposed to be parked here. I said, oh, I'm just doing a photo shoot. So I thought it'd be nice to, you know, it's a nice spot for the car. Yeah. You're still supposed to be parked here. And he's like, he can tell, he just can't figure what's, what the thing is. So I'm going to loop, but you should be gone when I get back. I so said, I will be just a quick shot. So I'm doing, yeah, okay. So he goes, if you'd walk around, she couldn't get to her clothes. So she's this well out lady hiding behind the car. Oh, no. Dude, waiting for the policeman to come and say, that's public duty, you're in trouble. <laughs> so, but unfortunately he didn't, he, he did. I had a van over there and a car over here. It's like, how'd you get the car here, son? Uh -huh. <laughs> Is the other person. So, so it was. It's kind of, this is a really popular pose. It's beautiful. The tummy falls in, um, the, the breasts kind of fill up, the legs look really good, it kind of bends out. And I, I have a mylar for it. I have special lighting 
designed to bring chrome out. Chrome of a bike's a kind of like photographing a mirror. It's really done. Expecting moms are fun. Mm -hmm. So we, we were doing what they evolved into doing kind of nudes. Like with it. So like all ages of couples that kind of come in. Uh, she's also in her late 50s. And this time, and they become giggling with her, the time stuff that they work with. Uh, this is a fun set. Now this, this here, is, this is the paper. This is a fabric background, but it, it, that's all painted in there. It's kind of neat to play with. Uh, this shows off my canyon a little bit here. Uh, so you can see the attitude this gets. Like we work with a wide angle lens. So her legs, she's a little short thing. She's like four feet, eight inches kind of thing. Doesn't crack five feet. And yet she looks dangerous and full bodied and stuff. So, so that's the camera getting close. It makes the legs look longer. The light from above makes the breasts look taller, like look, look healthier and wiser. And then of course the chains of attitude or chin up makes the face look light in the face. This is a different chair, same type of chair. I do the same kind of thing. Kind of get into them. They're sort of fun. Masks are cool. So here's the same chair again with the pink light behind it. Doesn't that look cool? Yeah. That is like cool. it completely transforms mm -hmm. the chair, which is really kind of wild here. Uh, let's see. So this is a fun story. So this girl came in. She, she's beautiful. And she's the receptionist where I get my chiropractor work done. She looked amazing. She's coming for a photo shoot. And he said, no, 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 no. And also I get this phone call. She says, Mark, um, I got breast cancer. And we're having them removed tomorrow or in two days. And I come in for a photo shoot tomorrow. I want to do news. I'm going to lose my mate, my amazing breast. And she was right to back. She came in for the photo shoot. Her husband's there as well. Um, she left the whole world behind. So this was her being her um, and with this really uncertain future. And it all ended up well. She came back in after the, her new breast had kind of healed. And it was a whole new thing for her. She's, she was really, really great to play with. We do unusual angles um, that tell a neat story that you don't normally see. Uh, I like mysterious looks with hair and eyes and things. Uh, silhouettes are fun. So here's the bed. again. This is like a different bed um, that she's on. There's the window from behind and whatnot. Uh, this is the bedroom set, but the light from above. And so it's really quite strong. And here's my canyon again. And she's, some of the grins get kind of funny because they're, you know, the Western set. She, her dog was in all the photo shoots. He was just, this is a better shot of the wings. Aren't they elegant? And of course, different bits. So we have all different sizes of women and everyone looks just amazing. And they feel so, so good about themselves. Now, this is a shot that everyone looks, you know, this is a cool shot because the legs are further behind. So the camera makes them look smaller looks, and longer because they tilt the camera up. There's optics and stuff I work with. Her hands... Her arms are doing two things. They're bringing her breasts together so the breasts look larger and fuller. And the arms are hiding her tummy. So we have this whole sleight of hand as to what is happening. But they look at me. I do my photography like when you go to, to buy a dress. You don't pick the dress that makes you look dumpy, right? You're going to go You're going to go on a very special evening. It's full of the nines. You're buying a very nice expensive dress. You don't pick a dress that makes you look dumpy. You pick one that hides your concerns and elevates your assets, right? Mm -hmm. even guys do that and that's my photography is that's what we do that's beautiful and again it goes back to the passion because i love what i do so much i'm constantly paying attention to things and so that's what become you become better at so if you're doing something you, that you love so much you are more likely to become good at it because you're hyper aware of it you, you're drinking in every possible piece because it's your passion and you never get tired of it and smiles are fun people just kind of break out laughing and I get it. We're kind of goofing my photos. I don't take things too seriously. So if people this want is, to see um, more of your photos, what is the yes. website where they can see them? Yep. The website is innerspiritphoto.com. We'll get you there. Um, there is Inner Spirit Photography on Facebook. Um, Mark Laurie in LinkedIn. And Inner Spirit Photo on Instagram. Also put Wah Photography Calgary. But Inner Spirit Photography. If you go to... If you go to innerspiritphoto.com, you will get to, um, we have social media connections down there. There's also a lot of blogs uh, on the website. There's like hundreds of photographs, hundreds and hundreds of photographs there. Uh, you'll see books, our water set, our fire sets, all the stuff we kind of play with are all, are all there. That, that is beautiful. So um, now I have a personal question for you, and I you sure. might have already answered it. <laughs> but okay. what do you see the most happiness and fulfillment in your life right now? Um, it's to do with photography, of course. It is 
guess it's pushing myself. It's playing with, with cameras and lights and angles, um, getting the model. You know, when I say model, it really, I'm just getting my clients who've come in and said, yeah, I'll do stuff. Like right now it's the fire. Um, it's like a toy. It's like, it's just, it's just like this neat toy. I, and then we get them my photography and my computer doing digital things with them. And the watching a woman is two sides. Part of it's the art. I, I get to indulge my vision, which is really satisfying to your soul. Then I'm photographing women who are, in a lot of cases, most cases, I've had horrible things happen to them. And some of them are, are beyond my imagination. And I see them find themselves again. And that's great for my heart. So I got, I got my passion, my art is good for my soul. And how I change women's lives is good for my heart. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And I can tell you're so passionate and that your photographs are, are just gorgeous. So thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. We've got one thing that's kind of cool is we do, if, if you go into Facebook, uh, we also have a group called uh, Goddess Goddesses. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, um, we put photographs, there's an affirmation photograph every Monday that's to powerful women. And then we also have a quote on Thursdays. And in between, on uh, Friday, we do fire, fine art stuff. So that's just kind of what to expect if you go to, to my Facebook page, the Inner Spirit Photography one. Beautiful. Sweet. It's been a delight. Thank you so much for me to just like natter on about, oh my goodness. Yeah. This is like, it just, I got so many stories, you know, 5,000 of them. They're um, great just... stories. Yes. So I have one last question before we finish. Sure. What okay. is your best advice on living an incredible, amazing life? It's going to be seek out your passion. Um, literally, like when you, when you find something that resonates with you, and, and, and sometimes, Sometimes you don't want your passion to become what you make a living with because then it becomes a job and, and a job like, for example, if I was untethered and I didn't have to do marketing and the books and all the business stuff, um, just like, oh, you're a wealthy person, go do what you want. <laughs> that would be great. But, the, but you, when you become a business, that means the, you know, 20% of what your passion is is, is that. But the rest of it is, is like your work part of it. And I, I'm fortunate, I enjoy most of it. But you, the more you find something that you love, that just when you do it, just, the world feels good. And it doesn't matter, you could be putting a puzzle together, like whatever it is, it doesn't matter what the world thinks of it, it becomes your happy place that when you, you sit back and where can I go to, what can I do? If you've got one of those things, I mean, if you get two, you're in really good shape, you'll find the rest of the world because much easier to live into. You, you get, you find other people who share your passion, which means you get to be like this. You just talk about what you love. You see that with the Swifties an awful lot. Like they have the same, same connection. So they can always talk. And there's a, they talk about a bracelet mm-hmm. and everybody exactly knows what that is. So when you have that, when you, when you find your passion, the rest of your world will look automatically nice. You'll feel better. You have a place to reach, a safe place to retreat to. And if you do my photograph split and half test, you'll see a symmetrical face and you look beautiful in all your photographs. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. You're welcome. We'll talk to you again soon. I look forward to that. Thank you.